Hello! The very first Women's Prize for Nonfiction shortlist has just been announced. Now, I had made a video about the long list, and I've been steadily getting hold of some copies and reading through these books, but the Women's Prize have very kindly sent me the entire shortlist, and they're in this box, but I've not opened it yet, and I don't know what they are, because I thought it would be more fun to do this live on camera, so you can see my instant reaction, and I'll discuss each of these titles as I pull them out of the box. In terms of what I'm hoping and predicting to see on the shortlist, uh, I have read four and a half of the books on the long list, and I do hope that they are all shortlisted. Not because I don't want to do more reading, but because I honestly think that they're all excellent. So there is Doppelganger, there is Thunderclap, there is A Flat Place, and there is Matrescence. And how to Say Babylon, uh, Sinclair's memoir, is the one that I'm currently uh, halfway through reading, and it is so good, really beautifully written and fascinating. And so, yeah, all of those five I hope to see on the shortlist, uh, and Shadows at Noon, because uh, that's the one that I randomly picked with Anna to read, and it's very long, so I'm hoping it'll give me the uh, kick in the pants to, to actually read this book. So, okay, I'm now going to open the box, and here we go. And that, uh, and this side, okay. Ooh, very exciting. And I will reach inside and um, pass the paper. What is the very first book? Um, oh, a flat place. Uh, I accidentally took out two, so I'm going to put that other one aside for now. And yes, a flat place. Um, I just read this very recently. Um, it uh, was also nominated uh, for uh, the Young Writer, Sunday Times Young Writer of the Year Award. It's such a, a beautifully written memoir um, about the author's uh, experiences growing up in very constrained circumstances and moving to the UK to start a new life for herself and um, debating these like issues uh, to do with colonial history and um, her place in it, um, but also um, about the, um, the, the pleasure and the comfort that she finds in these open landscapes that are completely empty and how she travels to a number of these locations around the UK, meditating upon her own history, um, but also um, con contemplating um, how we deal with these memories. And I found it so fascinating and um, really useful um, to like think about my own history and my own place in the world. And it's just uh, it's just a stunning memoir. Okay, the, the second book that I accidentally, oh great, um, pulled out um, is All That She Carried by Tia Miles. Um, so this is a, a book looking at a particular historical artifact of a sack which was hastily um, packed um, by a, a woman that was a slave and trying to escape with her child um, to evade her child being sold and, uh, and so that they could stay together. And so um, it traces the line of this particular family history, um, discussing uh, all of the things uh, about this family um, which are unknown and which have been erased and how we can only reconstruct what happened to them um, through these small pieces which have been left behind, but also obviously speaking about the wider history of slavery in America um, and um, the history of families that have been erased through time. And I've heard so many good things about this book and have been really wanting to read it. So yes, I'm looking forward to reading this book. Um, now, the next one on the short list is... Uh, yay! Thunderclap! <laughs> Another book that I've read and which had also got um, multiple uh, book award uh, attention. Um, and this story, um, it's, it's at once like a 
personal history and memoir about the author's um, father, who was an artist and about her experiences being raised under him and um, learning about art, but also a particular artist from history, um, the, the, uh, the artist um, that created the, the famous painting of um, the, the goldfinch and um, how he died very young, um, uh, also um, like her father who died um, before his time. And so connecting this, um, this history of art um, and, uh, but is also discussing this larger issue of mortality and how we could really die at any moment or we can lose people that are close to us um, at any moment and um, how it examines that um, in such a, a beautiful and, and subtle way while discussing these pieces of art and, um, and Dutch art in general. And it gave me a much greater appreciation of Dutch art and actually like um, inspired me to, to go to the National Gallery in London to look at some of these pieces of art. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful, really fascinating uh, book. Um, that's a really, yeah, compendium of this like art history and memoir and yeah, such an interesting mixture. So that is great. Okay, the fourth book on the short list ah, is Code Dependent. I've just had to look up more detail about this book because I've not read it yet. Uh, so it's looking at uh, how artificial intelligence and algorithms um, really shape so many aspects of our lives. Um, some of them um, we don't even realize and it looks at a number of particular cases of a uh, range of individuals and how it affects their lives and um, what we can do about this. So um, yeah, this sounds really fascinating. And uh, the fifth book on the short list, uh, ah, yay, is How to Say Babylon. Um, so yeah, halfway through reading this book about the author's experiences growing up in Jamaica, um, her father and mother um, were Rastafarian and how her sensibility has been shaped by this, but how um, over time um, she began to question these ideas, especially because um, her father became increasingly um, strict and um, very controlling uh, of her. And so um, it's um, tracing the progress of how she gradually um, created an independent life for herself and found a poetic voice. And she is a, a poet. So there are so many passages of this um, which are absolutely beautifully written, but also about how her mother has inspired in her like a love of literature and her mother comes across as such um, an amazing figure um, in this story, but also how her father had a really complex um, upbringing and, um, and life and experienced a lot of disappointments and economic hardship and how that really um, shaped um, his attitudes and um, the, the way he interacted with his family and um, so yeah I'm, I'm finding it so compelling and um, yeah I'm really looking forward to finishing reading it and I'm gonna um, keep reading it after I make this video so now the final book on the short list ooh, see what it is um, I think surely it has to be doppelganger because it's yeah yes and it is it's I got it right this is doppelganger um, Naomi Klein's um, memoir I'm tracing um, at first how uh, her uh, kind of double online a um, real life woman that she um, is often mistaken for and confused with online and I'm um, discussing that whole process um, which is obviously very frustrating um, because um, this woman um, that um, she is confused with um, has very different politics from her and um, so she can get some very strange messages sometimes but um, but also how this um, points to uh, a lot of divisions in our society and um, how we can be so politically divided as a society and sort of examining that especially through the the past few years of political changes and throughout the the recent pandemic and um, and how that has really amplified um, these divisions in our society and so it's looking at a lot of these larger issues and how a lot of this has been mediated through technology and like our, our online um, profiles and way we ways that we present ourselves online so I think um, it'll be really interesting to 
read these two books um, alongside each other. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, I found this so fascinating and oddly comforting. I, I know um, some people that have been reading it and um, found it really um, difficult because um, it deals with um, so many um, topical issues that are really um, sensitive to a, a lot of people. But also, as she talks about in one chapter, it's oddly comforting um, to discuss a lot of these things out in the open and why these things are occurring, because I, I think a lot of the time we can sit back and um, feel really bleak and depressed about it all because we're like, why is all of this happening? But to actually talk through and discuss it all um, is does give an odd sort of comfort and um, and also looks at like practical steps of, of what we can do to try to solve all of these things. So yay, I'm really glad to see um, this shortlisted. And yes, um, these are the six books on the nonfiction shortlist. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to um, finishing the book that I'm currently reading and reading the other two books that I haven't read yet. And I'd really encourage you um, to, to read the other ones as well. Oops. Uh, just almost dropped them because um, yeah they they are they're so so good but uh, but yeah there there are other books um like I I'd um, just recently read um matrescence um matrescence um, I keep getting that title Ron and uh, and I'd really encourage you to read this too because me especially as a man and someone who doesn't have children. I found this such an eye-opening uh, experience about so many of the issues it raises um, concerning um, like just general knowledge um, about the process of motherhood and parenting that we don't fully understand yet, or at least there's um, a lot of contradictory and um, misinformation um, about this out there and um, yeah, looking at these larger issues. And it was especially so fascinating reading this um, alongside the novel Soldier Sailor, which is on the Women's Prize um, for Fiction long list um, because these deal with a lot of um, similar issues, but look at them from different angles. And um, yeah, this also takes a much more personal look at this, but, um, but yeah, it's, um, uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, really interesting reading these alongside each other. And I do still want to read um, some of the, the other titles on the, the long list, um, especially um, Some People Need Killing. Um, that's a book that I've been really wanting to get to reading and wife them. Um, so yeah, a lot more to read, but uh, those are the books on the short list. Let me know if you have read any of these books, if you're interested in reading any of them now, or if there are any other titles on the long list that you would recommend that you are hoping to see um, shortlisted. Please let me know about that in the comments below. The winner of uh, the very first nonfiction um, prize um, will be announced uh, in June, on June 13th, I think, um, along Side the winner of the fiction category and um, so that'll be really exciting but yeah thank you for watching this video and I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I will speak to you again soon bye bye